Hello, 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 hello everyone, and welcome back. Uh, so today it's a little bit crowded in here. Um, you're going to hear a bit of snoring, and you know, this is the channel where the room is dirty and the uh, coffee is hot. So, um, like I said, you're going to hear a lot of snoring, but it is technically at the quietest time of day, I guess, or um, I guess I was kind of impatient who knows what's going to happen later, and uh, I have so much to do, um, so much on my plate, hobby-wise, and actually getting a job, uh, and just some, some other stuff, so today, I thought it'd be very, very fun to play around with these, and playing around with these involves a lot of technical stuff, um, like for the Yeti, it's just a USB and plug-in, I couldn't even imagine if I had a camera to, to also run. So the USB camera is poor quality, but I think it's much more important to have better audio than there is to have video. Um, and right now, I'm trying my best to not run this cable um, on my earbuds along this, um, I think it's called a TR, something, a TRS jack. I went to college for this, and I still don't remember, but it's something like that. So, today I thought it'd be really fun, I'm just going to jump right into it, and I'm going to read my very, very, very old book. This book that I'm about to read, and it's not an entire book, I'm not going to read all of it. But I will read some of it because it is horrible. Horrible grammar, horrible English. It sounds um, just awful in every sense. There is no structure to it. Uh, the sentences sometimes don't make sense. Things are misspelled. I will stumble constantly. Um, and it's just horrible writing and horrible everything. And I started to laugh as I started to read it. I will warn you, though, that this is 5th uh, or 6th grade Michael, or me. I am Michael. So if I use inappropriate language, such as, well, I did catch that I did use the word in dialogue because a friend insults him and calls him the R word. Now the R word I don't want to say, because today people are very, very sensitive, and I understand why people would be sensitive over this, um, because I don't think it's very politically correct, but um, I also don't think it's very nice to call or to use a, a derogatory word. Now, it's it, the R word I'm referring to is uh, refers to a special needs person, and I don't know if that's even politically correct to say, uh, a person with Down syndrome. Um, so yeah, I did use that word, and I'm just going to kind of skip over it because I don't want to trigger people at all. <laughs> um, and this is just for fun, because I was in sixth grade when I wrote this book, so please, please do not take anything too serious. I don't even know how far we're going to get along, so we're just going to hop right in. Hope you guys enjoy, because this is going to make me laugh, and I, I'm, my hope is to not only relax you, but to also make you laugh, I guess. And I do have to get more trained at looking at the camera, because I feel like I'm everywhere else besides the camera with my eyes. But let's get, out, uh, get to the story. So, I called the story... Beyond the Limits. This is the uh, prologue, which I actually haven't read yet, or I don't really quite frankly remember. Beads of sweat dripped, dripped off my head as the burning lava scorched every living thing. Let me make sure I'm recording. Okay, good. My hands felt as if lead replaced the flesh dragging my sword on what was left of the castle floors. 
my mouth, burning and dried out, was gasping for air, mostly from the heavy armory and the sweltering temperatures around me. I fought my own self trying to stay alive from the heavy pressure and the low amount of oxygen. My eyes not working well, tried hard, focusing on blurs of steam which made hallucinations. Most of the hallways were filled with rubble and massive stone block structures piled on top of each other coming from the walls. Many died throughout the castle, either getting crushed or being captured or eaten by a dragon. Ke Chemo trough attacks cut came rarely. Chemo troughs came from wolves and some other type of animal that feeds on radiation. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, in chemistry or biology, I heard or I saw the name chemotrophs, which feed off of radiation, and I thought it would be a really cool name, I remember, uh, to, to call an animal or a creature a chemotroph for whatever reason. And, um, yeah. And I also used the Theosaurus, of course, a lot. I could tell just by looking at it. All right, continue. The other attackers, the dragons, was led this time by the reaper. Many name it the black beast. <laughs> the devil's pet. But we named it reaper. Reaper to me always meant death or coming from the grim reaper. Last year, I picked a book up called Apparently there's a library in this time. I don't... Last year I picked a book up called The Book of... <laughs> Folklore. <laughs> Which told the legend that when the volcano... Ignatius exploded, it would bring a satanic animal with it. It also said the dragon would not be merciful, but any kind of dragon was never merciful and very territorial. Despite the king's thoughts, he never believed in what he called in what in what he called rubbish, impossible with two bees, and the child's story. Okay. He would especially never listen, listened to me, making me feel like a child for believing in it. Secretly, I knew the king had a secret, something very embarrassed to talk about to anyone. Each night, he prays for good health and fortune, but after he whispers, as if he knows somebody's listening. One day I was... Uh, one day I was, and I caught him saying, oh, there's a series of pauses here, and then it says, son, a pause, make, son, stand, blood, pause, and then throughout, quest. Obviously he was talking about me. I did not have a brother, and my sister and mother died of sickness. What could he have meant? What could the word blood mean in the prayer? In a prayer, whatever it was not, whatever it was, was not for me to know. Then, one of God's great miracles started working as a heavy rain began. I smiled as some of the torturous pressure was lifted. Soon I had the strength to pick up my own sword. My focus even became better as I searched for the king or in other words, my dad. As I walked the castle, one by one, walls dropped, adding more air to come in, but only for a few seconds, making the flames collect it. 
My search continued as I head down one of the corridors that was now piled over. I obstacled over the rubble and pieces from the castle ceiling. After I traveled down the stairs into the entrance, yelling my father's name. Everything was so quiet, not even the flames collected in this area yet. I then heard an outside screech and an oncoming noise of the walls being hit. I had an adrenaline rush, making my stomach turn into a knot. I stood right there, trying to make out what the banging was. It literally sounded like rabid animal from the outside banging to get in. Crush. The entire wall fell, with dirt and pebbles thrown into the air, not making it visible. That's when I heard it. It took on a nasal and fearsome roar, followed with total silence. That's when my worst fear came alive. I couldn't see from all of the brown mists sneaking into faraway corners. It's not the mist that scared me, though. It was the faraway or close snarls that sent shivers through my spine. Quick pause. I always use that. I always love the shivering of the spine. And I also use, use the word lead a lot in my books, I remember. The L-E-E-A-D-D. To, like, describe someone having heavy feet or something. Okay, continue. Luckily, this room was filled with pillars that made me feel somewhat protected. I knew it wasn't Reaper. He was quick at finding things and was extremely quiet when doing things. But this dragon felt like it was waltzing around, sending stress calls. Even if even its breathing were like soft echoes, like predators, as the dirt started to clear out, I saw a white tail in front of me lead off some, some one unknown, somewhere in the, I don't know what I was doing. The door which I came through had fallen wood over it, falling with a pathetic fire. The only way out that was most safe for me was the broken wall, which was too high, but I could probably make it up there if I had the strength. That's when it began to rain, although thicker. But quickly I noticed it wasn't raining in other areas, just me. That's when I looked up to see two intense bulging green eyes on a pure white dragon. Now I knew it was time to run. Wait a minute, pause for a second. If this is in fact the Reaper, which I don't know actually if this is or not, didn't the king just say it was known as the Black Beast? So wouldn't it be bl I don't know if it's, I don't know. Uh, I ran down the narrow hallway that still collected and builded the fire throughout every crevice. The dragon seemed to have no problem ripping through it and completely destroying and taking the sides of the walls with them, making the entire outside wall fall like dominoes. My eyes stung with the stale air turning into an acid-like gas. As if things couldn't get any worse, the direction I was heading it, it, it was the Sorry, as if things couldn't get any worse, the direction I was heading in was the gunpowder room. With the stakes that high, my only chance was to jump through the nearest opening. Sadly, there was no more openings, probably for the safety of the gunpowder. I came up with a fast plan that may make me die, but it was well worth trying. I raced for the gunpowder room and slammed the door. Everything was so quiet, especially dark. With no light, everything I heard outside became worse mentally. 
It sounded like a tornado getting closer and closer. The white dragon was getting closer, smelling my blood. Hold up, hold on. The white dragon was getting closer, smelling my blood. It was a sweet perfume he couldn't resist, especially my blood. Okay, when smoke entered the room, I started to panic. All of a sudden, the door busted open, making me work my little plan. As I surely found out, the dragon walked... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... What's going on here? <laughs> if the dragon's that big, he's not fitting in a door, nor is he can just gonna walk in and that's how I made it sound and it's just oh man <laughs> I ran out and jumped hesitantly from the building those one jump was by far the most difficult thing he had to do in his life I don't know whose perspective this is. I really don't. Um, it was quickly cut off by a steep hill that clinged up against the castle and got less steep at the bottom. That successfully made me land without too much of an injury. Surprisingly, I had no in injuries, making me stand slowly and making me be the hero for once. No one was around, but I even posed like a hero making me feel invincible. I slowly walked away in a prideful way, but jumped out of my skin when behind an explosion happened. It was the gunpowder room along with killing my first dragon. Alright, in all honesty, let's pause here because there's a big space, so I'm just going to take the opportunity to say... It was going strong for that first part. The first four pages, they were they were all right. You know, they were le legible. I could understand, even though they were a bit confusing. The last page, though, or so, just threw me off. I don't know what was happening. It, just weird, weird definitions, weird descriptions. I, I don't know what that was. Um, I really do want to get to the part though that I really know and is very nostalgic um, maybe I can skip some of this because I'm not really reading it mm -hmm. I returned my attention to the dragon which spread it out mm, no. oh here we go an old man with white hair and a long beard came in front of me in front of us and yelled stop it was Merlin a white orb spread over us, blocking any fire going through. When the dragon finished with his rampage, Merlin picked up a rock. Before my eyes, it turned obsidian black. Merlin pointed at the dragon when another ex unexpected thing happened. Merlin's hand glowed a static red. His eyes widened and looked straight in my eyes. You, he said in a surprised tone. The dragon then quickly gripped a claw around the king and threw him backwards, sending him a mile long. I turned to a state of shock, as if I couldn't breathe. Merlin turned, with his eyes turning a pure white. He put his two hands cupped. He put his two hands cupped and said, In this rock, dragons must stay, for human beings will not pay. One day, the one will be chosen to guide these beasts in the right way of corrosion. <laughs> with, with that, he struck down on the rock with his hands, making a pure white wave striking the demon and making it being sucked into the deep chambers of the rock. Yeah, let's just skip this. I don't know what's going on. Let's... Merlin and I really don't know what just happened um, yay beyond the limits chapter one so I might make this in another video if you guys like it 
just because I find it funny myself. Chapter 1, Finding a Key. It was a... So this is what I... Quickly, quick, quick pause. Uh, this is what I know the best, because I really tried hard, like my very best in sixth grade, to make a good first impression with the first chapter. And it's not good. It's, it's not good. It may be more understandable. It may be very cringy. Uh, but it's not good. It's just okay. And okay is not, not even good. Um, so let's continue on with this great story. So I guess now, without it telling you, it's going to present day in Oregon, I believe, just for a little bit of context. It was a depressing and afternoon as a scented mist danced through the air. It was a boring day for me, and therefore was nothing to do, as of now the freezing rain was a non-stop scenery. I watched television, ate whatever I wanted, and read till my mind nearly exploded. The rain was showing no mercy along the streets, just making the road a slip and slide for any vehicle competing the never-ending weather. I waited and waited, but nothing happened. Finally, my mom came into the room and asked me a question she already knew. Did you clean your room? I tilted my head towards her, clearly stating I didn't. My mom was pretty worried about the house because her friends were having this book club on a dumb romance book. But I don't think she would be... I just thought something really. Her, his mom and her friends are just reading Fifty Shades of Grey in the other room. Okay, I'm good. But I don't think she would be taking them on a tour of my bedroom. Where's your friends? she asked. They're all at the beach swimming. Come on, Mom, it's raining. Where do you think they are? I said dramatically. Hey, what can I tell you? School comes back in two weeks. Yeah, I can't wait, and I bet Kevin can't either. My mom turned in disgust and left. Kevin was this bully that I guess had a six-inch growing spurt, and he had blonde curly hair and always wore the same jeans and owned four long sleeve shirts to his name. Very observant. He was one of those bullies that if you told him on if you told on him he would end up blaming it on you. I felt bad for my friends though, who could never really defend themselves. I stood up for them a few times, which just added me more bullies and more problems. More money, more problems. If you didn't notice, we are all in seventh grade. I love that. Quick pause. That's. Amazing writing. I put in those bracket looking, whatchamacallit things. Just as a side note, if you didn't notice, we are all in seventh grade. I mean, why don't more books do that? They should just come out and. Why read off? context clues and, and subtle writing about 7th grade, just put it in there. <laughs> I mean, just wow. Okay, continue. It wouldn't shock me if one of my friends, Chris, were surfing the tides right now, which was impossibly dangerous. Yes, Chris is considered to be popular, but it does not stop Kevin. The only person in the whole school Kevin loves to pick on is Dave who cringes in fear from the hearing of his name. He was an... He was an easy target, but most of all, he was a math genius, safety band player that happens to be one of my best friends. In fact, one thing you need to know about me is... dot dot dot... Well, let's get on with the story. Again, just brilliant. I love that. 
I decided to call Dave around 3 o'clock and asked if he wanted to meet me at the old oak trail at the sign. By this time, the rain, long past gone, was now making the roads a blanket of black ice. I stepped out of the warm house and into the frigid weather. I went toward my bike. No one would consider to ride a bike in 20 degree weather. However, it did not matter to me. I carefully went down the street, walking my bike, and towards the stop sign. But why is he taking his bike if he's going to walk? I was warmly in a hoodie, and on top of that, I was in a jean jacket. As I waited at the sign, I wondered what was keeping my friend. He should have been here already since he lived up the street. I saw a faint figure in the mist of the snow. It was probably him. So I waited until I noticed it was a man and a dog walking. I started my way up to David's house until the van speeded, speeded toward my direction, looking like he was heading towards the town square. I glimpsed the sign on the van as it was coming by. It said, National Geographic Museum. I practically had a heart attack as the truck started honking like a mad man. I backed up as it swerved out in the main street. A truck was coming out too fast as just on time, trying to stop, and finally, crash. I was cold in my track, and then the trunk opened to the van. This is not sounding very good. <laughs> he gave him candy. No, things came crashing out like old books, fossils, picks in their frames, stones, statues, glass statues, Indian dolls, and a big framed object fell out of these boxes. I stayed there not knowing what to do. The man came out not knowing that his stuff gutted gutted all over he ran over to the car he intended he indented with his truck to see if the person was all right wait a minute why would he be checking on him shouldn't the guy check on the kid i cautiously went over to the pile but curious about the framed object Inside of my surprise was some kind of map. It blew right out the broken frame and down the street. The map danced in the air all around. I quickly got back on my bike and started to pedal as fast as I could. The map was headed toward the beach. I got between two stores and raced down the hill. Adrenaline crashed through me as I was now sliding on a long sheet of black ice. I turned quickly and fell in a pile of snow beside the road. My bike was lying out in the street, so I quickly picked it up and raced toward the map, not noticing the, the mud that was all over the side of my jacket. The map landed in the sand right near the ocean. I threw my bike out of the way and jogged over to, to pick it up. The details were amazing, and seeing that the date was 1590... 79. It was in good condition. I started deciding if I should keep it. Would they notice? Could I go to jail if they caught me with a map? As I pedaled home... Okay, so... The other thing is... You kinda... If you ever watch The Goonies... You're kinda seeing right now where I'm getting inspiration from... As I pedaled home, I saw two cops, one directing traffic and the other talking to the museum driver. The truck driver was talking on a cell phone. I felt a little bad about keeping the map, but I almost killed myself getting to it. Did he? As I put my bike against the mailbox, I saw five vehicles in the driveway 
and decided to go to the side of the house since I was drenched. I climbed up the trellis that I nailed in the house a long time ago so it wouldn't budge. I was halfway with a map tucked in my back pocket when I saw my dad's car down the street. My dad couldn't see me at my viewpoint, but could easily see me when he got out of the car. I scurried up when I noticed some nails started to come loose. I ignored them and then pushed up to my room. Ooh, I think I put foreshadowing in there. I landed on my desk and slid my legs through the window to on my bed. My dad just shut the door as I closed the window. Okay, I'm not going to mention it here, but also the bed would be all muddy. Ooh, that makes me feel uncomfortable. When I came in, I hopped on my desk chair and turned on my awesome new computer that I got on my 13th birthday. I looked at the map. It had a weird language. French or Spanish, I agreed, although I had no clue. Okay, apparently that's a weird language. My computer was fully loaded, so I decided to go web browsing. I don't know why. I guess it sounded stupid, but I searched anyway. I typed in 1579 map. The web couldn't find any other listings except for a fake and unreal unrealistic maps for $10. What a rip. I then searched any source I saw. It then took me to the only one, one link about Spanish galleons. Yep, Spanish alright. I clicked the first link, and it started telling me about how the Spanish galleons were coasting around the shore. I found that Sir Francis Drake were in an epic chase, trying to steal treasure from the Spanish. Treasure? With an exclamation mark. Now that's more like it. I suddenly stared at my monitor blankly. Okay, I'm going to stop there, but you get the idea. It's really, really bad. And I thought it'd be funny. It kind of was. It was kind of stupid. But also, I wanted to make a video with these mics just to kind of test them again. And, uh, yeah, just play around with them. So, this was a good test run. I think I'm getting more and more used to them. And I'll also be using the Yeti still. But, uh, yeah. So, thank you guys for watching. Um, that was the chair. My chair is breaking, apparently. And, uh, bye everyone. Good night. Hope you like. Leave a like. And a comment if you like it. Awesome. Goodbye.